game. The number two and number three scoring offenses hooking up in the Superdome. First, Louisiana Tech. Tim Rattay finds James Jordan over the middle. He'll break some tackles, and Michael Jordan can't tackle him. Seven zip, Louisiana Tech. Let the scoring fest begin. Sean King to Kerwin Cook, 63 yards, 14-10, Tulane. P.J. Franklin, 21-yard reverse, 21-10, Tulane. King to the wide open Cook, 59 yards, 28 16, two lanes. Tony Converse, six yard touchdown run, 49 23. Sean King, 12 yard quarterback draw, 56 to 32 lane after three. Tony Converse, 10 yards, one of his four touchdowns. And King would celebrate with the crowd and in a hurry. 63. Well, rumored to be the next coach of Auburn. First quarter, 3 0 Ole Miss for that egg bowl. Wayne Matkin. Hits Kevin Prentice for a 39-yard game all the way down to the Ole Miss three. And three plays later, James Johnson takes it in from two yards out. Could call himself Jimmy Johnson, but he's James Johnson. One of two touchdowns for James in the game. Mississippi State up 7-3. It's up 14-6 in the third when Madkin throws the screen pass to Desenzo Miller. And he takes it to the house. 28 yards, Mississippi State up 21-6. Ole Miss efforting for a fat comeback in the fourth quarter, but with two minutes and change to go. The pass deflected all the way to Tim Nelson, and he is gone. 30 yards touchdown. The Bulldogs win by the final of 28 to 6. So Mississippi State wins the SEC West and will play Tennessee. The way to Austin and Ricky Williams getting a standing ovation. The crowd was there with a sense of history, and Tony Dorsett was there as well. Even though he played when his name was Tony Dorsett and he played for Pitt. He was there to look on as his record was in danger. Williams, an outside handoff, picks up 14 yards, but he's closing in. He's now under 50 yards to go. Same possession. He is a huge running back. He pulls up the middle for seven yards. The drive ended in a field goal, but the Longhorns are up three to nothing. Next possession, Brett Musburger describes Williams history. Hole. Williams, hello, record book. Ricky Williams runs to the Hall of Fame. Cuts back. Ricky Williams, touchdown. Doing it much the same as Tony Dorsett had done it. We'll get to more of that later, but his mom looking on, mom Sandy, and then Tony Dorsett, as he's now called, on the sidelines. Getting congratulations as well as he was there to see it in person. Take a look as Ricky Williams just bulls his way. He looks just like Earl Campbell did when he ran for the Texas Longhorns. And into the record books he goes, and more importantly for the day, up 10 to nothing on the heavily favored A&M Aggies. Next touch for Williams deep in his own territory the handoff of Major Applewhite he fumbles on his huge heroic day coughs it up Cornelius Anthony recovers the ball's ruled dead but Williams not happy with that A&M would take advantage Randy McCown steps back and finds Derek Spiller and it spills into the end zone a 20-yard touchdown pass A&M's within a field goal 16-7 at the half Texas still on top in the fourth quarter more Williams from his side of the 50 he busts loose for 15 yards. Another huge gang. He is now going way past Dorsett to set his own rushing standard. Applewhite for the touchdown goes to Kwame Cavill. A 10-yard TD reception. Texas in a shocker up 23-7. But again, on a loose pitch, the ball pops loose. Another fumble for Williams. Ronald Flemons recovers for the Aggies. Texas A&M again takes advantage. McCown to Spiller again. 17 yards at the end zone marker. 23-17, Texas lead down to six. A&M rallying again. McCown with a soft touch to Matt Baumgartner. Baumgartner hauls it in at the two-yard line. Two plays later, less than three minutes left in the game. McCown takes it in himself. A&M up 24-23. Texas on its last drive. Applewood's got to pick up big chunks of ground. Doesn't throw, doesn't hand to Williams, does it himself for nine yards to the 45. Three plays later, 35 seconds left. Cavill makes a nice catch at the 20-yard line and goes into outstanding field goal territory for Chris Stockton, who doesn't need to get too close. Williams picks his way around the end. Gets the first down with 10 seconds left. Stockton thinking it over. A&M coach and Adrian Carson look like. R.C. Slocum looking on, hoping he'll miss, and he gets it just inside the far upright. A 24-yard field goal. And a fitting way to end it on this historic day for Ricky Williams. Texas pulls off a win against the only team it really matters to beat in the Longhorn State. 
26-24. The loss snaps the Aggies' 10-game win streak. In any shot, R.C. Slocum's team entertained and playing in the national title game. Big Cornheads were hosting neighboring Colorado, trying to avoid their worst season in 30 years. And Colorado plays right into their hands. Clint Finley picking off Mike Machete. He goes 42 yards the other way, and the Cornhuskers break up in a scoreless game early on in the first quarter. We move you to the third. Huskers up 13-7, looking for more. Eric Crouch throws to the end zone. No touchdown. It's picked off by the Buffs, Ben Kelly. Kelly's fourth in the INT of the year. Colorado's ensuing drive from 15 yards out. Machete this time finds Andy Peak. 14-13, Buffaloes ahead on a 80-yard 13-play drive. But they fumble in the fourth quarter, and Nebraska, with a third and six, converts in the flat. Shevin Wiggins not only shakes off the tackles, he rumbles 24 yards. Seven plays later, they're looking for the lead. Chris Brown kicks the go-ahead field goal, a 25-yarder, but there's still nine minutes left with the Huskers up 16-14. Two minutes left now. Colorado second down for Nebraska's 34. Chad Kelsey. One of 21 seniors playing their final game in Lincoln. Sacks Machete, six sacks in the day for Nebraska. So call this the Maylocks Bowl in Little Rock. LSU ranked last in the SEC in pass defense, and Clint Sterner taking advantage. Finds Joe Dean Davenport underneath, and he rumbles for 18 yards. Same drive, third and 10. Sterner finding Michael Williams. Wide open over the middle for 15. Same drive, second and goal. He floats one out to Emmanuel Smith, who makes the touchdown catch. Sterner 11 for 14 with 136 yards and a touchdown in the first quarter. Now to the fourth quarter. 34-14, Razorback Sterner still going strong. Finds Michael Williams over the middle for 25. Then on third and 13, under pressure, rolls out. Very confident. And completes one over the middle to Emmanuel Smith for 25. Then three plays later, Sterner completes the drive with a five-yard toss to Eric Branch. Arkansas wins the Golden Boot 41-14. Sterner 27 of 38 for 334 yards and two touchdowns. That's after throwing for a school record 387 yards last year against the Tigers. Arkansas, its first nine wins in Pittsburgh second quarter. Mountaineers up 3-0. Mark Bolger to Corey Ivey, the 24-yard score. 10-zip Mountaineers. Late second quarter. Pittsburgh to punt on fourth down. K.C. Schiller blocks the punt. Gary Tompkins will run it in for a touchdown. Mountaineers up 31-7. Third quarter, 38-7. Bolger, the bomb to Sean Foreman. Got it! Great catch. West Virginia up 45-7. Fourth quarter, the blowout is on. Bolger to Ivy. Makes the nice catch. Great catching by the West Virginia Mountaineers in this one. 52-14 the final in a school that produced Jeff Hostetler, among others, at quarterback. Bolger. Arizona up 26-19. I said more on that later. Make more on it now. Candidate now up the middle, and this is just a 66-yard effort, but it's still pretty impressive. Two carries, 146 yards, and two scores if you're counting at home. Arizona up 43-28. Fourth quarter, same score. Fourth and nine for the Sun Devils. Ryan Keeley to Todd Heap, and that's a heap and help a touchdown. 23 yards, Arizona State cuts it to 43-35. Later in the quarter, same score. Candidate, comma, trung. This one's only 48 yards, but it's still pretty impressive. Wildcats go up 50-35. to He doesn't score short ones. Arizona State would not go away. Keeley now looking for Lindsey Jackson, and he squirts through a couple of tackles. Keeley threw for over 500 yards in this game. This score makes it 50-42 Arizona. So the Sun Devils try the onside kick, but Brad Brennan makes the catch, and he pays for it. So now all Arizona has to do is just stay in bounds and run out the clock. But for reasons that Witt and I could not come up with, Arizona quarterback Keith Smith on the keeper runs out of bounds. Stopping the clock. Could Arizona State capitalize? Well, it didn't look good when as Keeley dropped back to pass. Kelvin Hunter. Oh! That's why he's a defensive back. Sun Devils have another shot. 26 ticks left. Now Arizona State needing a big play. And they get one. Kenny Mitchell just extends the paw, makes the nice juggling grab down to the 33-yard line. So now they have a quick completion, and they spike the ball. Do they get it? They do. There's one tick left on the clock. Last play of the game. Dick Tomey says, get back. Here we go. Keeley looking for Lindsey Jackson again in the corner of the end zone, but Hunter is there to knock it away. Arizona hangs on to win 50 to 42, a wild game. Arizona could be heading to the Rose Bowl candidate, a candidate for a very impressive contest. 18 carries, 280.
McNabb in his final home game, and they just jumped on Miami real quickly here. D. Brown on the very first drive, capped it off in the touchdown run. McNabb had a big scramble in that first possession, and Syracuse was up 7-0 instantly. Miami got back within 17-7, but the kickoff right after that was the backbreaker. Kevin Johnson, yet another one to the house. One. 100 yards, Syracuse up 24-7. It was Woodshed City after that one. Second quarter, 31-7, McNabb again. I mean, look at the change of direction. I gotta bring him down with a heel. 51-yard touchdown, Orangeman up 38-7. McNabb goes out in style. The curtain call, the adulation. Thank you to the entire senior class from the Syracuse fans there. The Orangeman win the Big East Championship and the major bowl bid that goes with it, crushing Miami. Miami has never given up that many points in a football game. It's the worst loss ever, and Syracuse, well, perhaps headed for the Orange Bowl down. He's not inspired here. T. Martin zips it. The peerless Price, a couple of tacklers shaking right there. 67 yards for the touchdown of the Volunteers up 10-0 in the second quarter after kind of a sluggish start. Later in the quarter, nothing sluggish about this. Travis Henry. Busted in the end zone. You can't arm tackle him. Tennessee up 17-0. It's 20-0 early in the second half here. And Greg Zolman will find Everett Robinson. Ooh. Makes the catch. Drilled by Eric Westmoreland. Causes the fumble. And Chris Ramsour picks it up and rumbles into the end zone. Tennessee dominant on defense. Vanderbilt completely overmatched. They are 11-0 now, Tennessee, for the first time since 1938. 241 passing yards from Team R.C. Carter. Trickery in the first series to Michael Greer to Big Larry Brown. Larry downtown Brown just swats aside little DB there, shoves him to the ground, gets in the end zone, dogs up in the first minute, 7-0. Now it's 13-7 in the third quarter. Olandis Gary adding to the Georgia lead. I mean, the dogs' defense is in control of this game. They missed the two-pointer, but it's still 19-7. Back come the Jackets. Joe Burns gets in the end zone. The two-pointer cuts it to 19-15. They kick a field goal. Now they're within one, driving against Jim Donnan. And Brad Chambers, a pressure kick. Knocks it right through. Georgia Tech from behind, between the hedges. Beats Georgia, 21. Pittsburgh really got ambushed in the early going. The first quarter, Tech's up 3-0, and you see the scuffle there. And then things will get settled down, and they hand the ball off to Sharon Stiff who busted to the outside. Tech was all over Virginia and Aaron Brooks in the first half. It was 29-7 at halftime. Welsh got a little R-rated at halftime. Al Clark is then picked off by Byron Thweet, and the defense begins to key this comeback. The touchdown makes it 29-21. Tech still on top in the fourth quarter. Brooksy getting it going here. Trailing 32-21. Brooks to Thomas Jones. Nice catch, nice throw. Virginia coming back. 32-29 after the two-point conversion. Later fourth quarter, Virginia on the Tech 48, down by three. Brooks rolls out. The strike to Ahmed Hawkins. Races down the sideline. Virginia back to take the lead, 36-32. That's a sweet one for Aaron Brooks because he'd had some mistakes earlier in the game. But a huge second half, 345 yards passing for Brooks and three touchdowns. Terrence Wilkins caught seven passes for 141 yards. Virginia outscores Tech 29-3 in the second half. They'll go to the Peach Bowl with smiles on their faces. NC State against North Carolina, and the Heels had to have a win to become bowl eligible. Torrey Holt, oh, when you kick to him, he makes you pay. He backpedaled. This is a great punt, but he outkicks the coverage. That gives Holt time to set up the blocks, get to the sideline, scoot down the sideline. Forget about it. 24-10. Tar Heels still in command of the game, but Holt would spark him in the fourth quarter. It's still a 14-point game. Holt gets some nice blocks, and he does the rest. He was actually left off an All-American team this year. Oh, it's a shame. I, I, I mean, he does it all. Oh, wait. He's an All-American. Carl Torbush knows it, and he knows that he's in a little bit of trouble here. Yeah, give me that scowl. Into the end zone. On the handoff is Ray Robinson. Ties the game at 31. Then in overtime, NC State kicked a field goal in their possession. Carolina goes for the end zone. Oscar Davenport to Nay Brown for the win in the huge comeback. They clinch the winning season, the ninth straight winning season for the Tar Heels. 18 straight times they have beaten teams from the state of North Carolina.
goes way back to the Chris Keldorf era. Davenport, the successor, had three touchdown passes. NC State still headed to the Micron Bowl, but they had to have this one to join in the bowl fun. And Billy Burke picked off there by Brandon Short. Gets it down inside the five-yard line. That would set up a touchdown run, 14-7 Penn State. Later in the first quarter, Bill Burke, trouble again. Throws into coverage. David Macklin there for the pickoff. He's going to romp into the end zone. Nice move right there. Penn State would lead it 21-7, and they would pour it on. Remember, they're trying to get payback for that big loss at Michigan State last year in the third quarter. Burke. Yee. Yee. Anthony King stepping in there. Another interception return for a touchdown. Penn State. Placement Eric Chappelle. His first pass attempt picked off by Mark Cusano. Brings it back to the Notre Dame 24 yard line, but they would miss a field goal on the ensuing possession. Second quarter, still no score. Chappelle's third pass intercepted again, this time by Chris Claiborne, who returns it to the Notre Dame 32 yard line. USC failed to capitalize again. We're still scoreless. Jackson trying to give some advice. Notre Dame having all kinds of problems. Third quarter. Chad Morton, he had 128 yards on 28 carries in the game. Here, 11 yards down to the 28. And then Morton with a nice spin, gains 21 or more yards to the 7. Two plays later, Carson Palmer with the bootleg and rolling, 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 untouched. 7-0 USC. Notre Dame down 10-zip, less than five minutes left in the third. Backup QB Arnez Battle finds Mac Malcolm Johnson, 28 yards to the USC, 44. But on the next play, Battle, who's in there for Chappelle, intercepted by Richard Cook. And that was that as USC wins at 10 zip. First time USC has blanked Notre Dame since 62. Fighting Irish clearly missed. Same score, Tom Brady looking for Ty Streets. And he's got it, and he shakes off like 47 guys and scores. 28 yard score, 14 3 Michigan, the 11th consecutive game. Brady's thrown a touchdown pass. Second quarter, 21 3. Thomas bounces outside. His third touchdown of the half. Michigan up 35-3 at the half. Thomas still not done. 41-17 in the fourth. Thomas up the gut, and he won't stop until he's had enough. 80-yard touchdown run, his career-high fourth of the game, along with a career-high 183 yards as Michigan rolls. And Hawaii, the second team to finish a season 0 for 12.